Okay. Hello, Jeanette. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How I, are you? I'm very well. So we're here at Headstream Studios and Jeanette is here from Melbourne and you came over for your show at Climax I at did. the weekend. How was Lucky it? Lucky me. Uh, so awesome. In fact, I just want to do it again every night. Like it's so, so fantastic. Very blessed. Very um, thankful. You're very lucky to be in that booth. It was just the best. Honestly, the best. I Once I'd finished the set, I needed... I felt, oh my God, I think I could just do another three hours, maybe six. Yeah, That's always really, a good indication mm. that it's been a good set where you want to keep going, right? <laughs> Wanted to keep going, definitely. Especially once you kind of get familiar with it all and really find your groove. I just was like, this is heaven. This is heaven. Okay. So, so you, your uh, seal of approval for the climax oh, experience. 100%. Yeah. 100%. It was just honestly everything. I've honestly never been in a DJ booth that has its own toilet <laughs> shower as well. And also big ups to the sound and uh, lighting crew. They were just the best. Um, and just keep the vibes. They were just dancing throughout the whole time. It was just oh, that's awesome. Nice. That's the whole crew, nice. in fact, everyone. And yeah. did you have any time on the dance floor? Uh, I did during sound check and not whilst I was playing because I, you know, I like to be in there present. Um, but I was close to it at the very end. But no, I... Yeah, I did go the night before. Okay, okay. So as a punter, yeah, just to get a feel for it, which, um, yeah, very impressive. Nice. And so every th- attention to detail. This isn't your first time at Potato Head, right? No, it's not actually. So when did you first come over? Uh, first time was, oh, I think it's 2018, which was um, when Larry Heard. It was Larry Heard did his live show, uh, so it was Larry Heard. Peggy Goo, Sassy J, and myself. Okay. Um, which was heaps of fun. Yeah, it was a nice lineup. It was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, at about 2 a.m., myself and Chad White, so because who was on tour with Larry, uh, ended up jumping in the ocean. Oh, lovely. <laughs> getting told off by security, but it was. Oh, funny. really? Yeah. <laughs> you got scolded. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Mr. White. So that's Mr. White, right? Yes, yeah, okay. yes. Yeah. Excellent. And so, yeah, so you're, you're here from Melbourne. Mm-hmm. You've been a figurehead of the scene there for quite some <laughs> Apparently years. Apparently so, now. yeah. yeah. That longevity will do that to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, I, w- I want to talk about that. Mm-hmm. So what was the scene like there when you were kind of coming up? Well, I mean, obviously so much has changed um, since then. You know, a the music I was representing or into was very side room, um, side room music. Um, also, you know, as as a woman, it was a very different experience to now. So I'm very um, thankful to still be going and still be present and active within it, and see how much it's changed. Like because honestly, like I always knew, I always dreamt of it, and the fact that I'm still living through it and seeing this change is like is just the best so now i own uh, the fact that you know i mean being obviously older and being a woman being a mother whatever um i'm just really blessed okay so you mentioned that when you first started the music you play now is more of a side room thing 100 percent. how has that kind of evolved and then how would you describe your sound like i mean i'm not going to put words into my mouth yeah well i mean it, it you know i kind <laughs> of you know music you know i'm I'm into music but essentially um back then you know it was vinyl only of course there was no digital um you know analog sound that part that part i do kind of miss because no matter what like sound systems seem to have a bit more grit and um but essentially a lot of american uh, underground house music that now is at the forefront Mm -hmm. um so that's pretty amazing too um but you know i was into um, i still am I'm into like really keeping up with what's new. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not a person that likes to reminisce too much. I'm not, in fact, you know, not like down with that. Like I love to kind of acknowledge where I've come from and and all of the above, but I like to just kind of keep up with what's happening and still delving into, mm. you know, what it was that, that made me kind of get into it in the first place. But yeah, jungle, hip hop, reggae, you know, I mean, music full stop. So sure, every kind of sound. There's just good music. But as far as you know, thrashing it on a big system, yeah, I like to get okay. <laughs> get in and pounce. Proper yeah. house music. <laughs> yes. and so, so uh, that's interesting. So, in your opinion, okay. So for me, I feel like there is there are still amazing house records coming out. There's amazing yeah. music coming out. Full stop. Yeah. But I, I still think the best house music yeah, was coming out back in the day my, my feeling but what do you feel like? well I, I do agree I mean there's certainly 
there's still you know you have to kind of like I guess you still have to dig deep like because there's there's just so much more coming out there's so much access to more whereas before we didn't have the internet I mean now I'm saying like archaic but there was no internet we had to rely on imported record stores which for me you know I worked in the one kind of that existed in Melbourne Um, so there was no other way to research other than literally digging you know digging not not searching and being able to I mean now the access to to music is so different you know we would go digging for music you'd buy a pile of records you maybe five were great the other 25 you'd kind of put in the you know to the side but it was just a very different way of searching you had to search for music there was no reliance on I mean now you know through technology you like you know this group of songs then it will tell you all the other songs that you might love yeah the algorithm which you know i mean i've certainly used that but sometimes found some gems but yeah yeah i guess it's different but that's what will happen you know in 50 years time it will be well different again and i guess we won't imagine now what it will be like then the same way we couldn't have imagined and who knows what new sounds might arrive yeah and that's just life i mean that's just every you know everywhere we turn that's that's the reality so but it's also cyclical isn't it and so right now there's a tendency for people to play like fast trancey stuff which kind of was around 25 years ago or something like that yeah. so it's not new it's just new to the new generation yeah. uh, and that's interesting as well I think when you've been in the scene for a while you see these trends come oh, and go 100% and yeah. I mean you do see it keep evolving and changing um, you know some of which some of which you know you know stuff that I'm like uh, wasn't vibing it then I'm not really vibing it now yeah. but it just depends yeah. you know there was a whole you know there still is that there's all sorts of stuff that that has a kind of a comeback and you know like anything you know each to their own and and I don't know if it's um you know sometimes maybe the circles you're in or I don't know if everyone is necessarily playing fast but it is a thing yeah. I get it but there's yeah. also the other thing happening where people are going the very opposite yeah. so you know you just do your thing and yeah. you know it's music and the important thing is to not really try and um kind of go with trends and you know go with what really you're feeling and that's yeah. that's it the, the, the reality is one in three people are DJing now one in two it's yeah. a very different thing and that's kind of cool too because yeah. it's just a form of expression isn't it of course yeah mm. so so I want to sort of rewind a little bit um you mentioned you worked in Central Station I Records. did uh, you, you don't anymore no it doesn't exist it doesn't exist that's no. what I was gonna ask yeah. is it still there so no doesn't what happened exist. okay when did that end uh it ended probably well actually it ended when um about 10 years ago a group of us ex- ex-central station members um we took over the franchise in melbourne and this again the internet pretty much destroyed us ah. so then we became here now bc proprietary limited which was here now brown cow <laughs> proprietary limited that was our record store um we closed the doors um i had my second child it was a little six week old baby and we had to pack up this store but um yeah it was really due to the internet and okay but it was great it was great we did it for six years so that was yeah at least 10 12 years ago are there any stores there now in melbourne heaps yeah okay. so many any special ones you want to? Mention? oh i mean Northside records um now um uh plug seven um skydiver uh, I know I'm missing a bunch of important ones, but there's heaps. There's, okay. And they're all kind of in the vicinity of each other. But um, my days of that, I've often thought, oh, you know, could I do it? And I'm like, no, I think I've had my share of being in a record store. Fair enough. And as, uh, as it was. you also mentioned you have kids. So, um, yeah, how, how do you balance that? Because well, I've, just, I've just had a baby and right. I'm very confused about how yeah. I go forward it, <laughs> with well, music. Well, you know? well, now mine are kind of semi-adults 15 and 18 so um you know bigger than me and yeah just hang in there one day at a time just know that each phase as much as you think oh god this is like this just feels like it's going on and on all of a sudden you look back and and like it's over like anything in life yeah yeah like music trends i can feel absolutely i can (laughs) feel it's like a music trend (laughs) and and do, do your kids are they into your music they are. Well, actually, my oldest uh, producers, and he's really, really talented. He'll hate me talking about him, but yeah, they, they're definitely into music. 
Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. It's a good In fact, background. the younger one helps me put my Spotify lists together for various venues that I put lists together. Okay. So, yeah. We, so, that's how it's worked. You get them working for you. Oh, well, okay. I don't know about working. Yeah. We just <laughs> had <laughs> fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's no payroll. Okay. Okay. Good. Exactly. Perfect. In fact, yeah. I'm the one, yeah, yeah. paying with them. But, yeah, no. Um, so, so I want to talk about the Melbourne scene because so mm. in recent, well, maybe not even recent years, but like it feels like there was a period where it felt like every new artist I was yeah. seeing was coming out of Melbourne, like Tornado, Wallace, Fantastic Man. Elisa Joy, or yeah, Close Counters, ba- like it's, yeah. Bands like Mild Life and stuff yes. like that. So what is it about Melbourne? That, so is this like the, would you say it's like the kind of subcultural capital of Australia? Or? Well, I think it, I mean, there's, there's amazing artists in Sydney, Perth, you know, everywhere, Adelaide, I mean... Um, yeah, I think obviously, I think a lot of people headed to Melbourne. So not necessarily all the artists that are repping Melbourne are from Melbourne originally, but I think it just became this hub. Um, so I'd kind of, you know, I'd, I'd want to give it to all of, all of each capital city yeah. because, um, it just, I feel that Melbourne was a hub, but yeah, we, all of a sudden I think there was just this momentum, which is just in- incredible, but like full on talented musicians you know super talented musicians so and now they're going on to next level heights and yeah kind of not necessarily still in melbourne or come and go but yeah, yeah. but what is, what is it about melbourne that you think yeah because it's so goddamn cold okay. i don't know <laughs> it's like um i guess i guess like anything it's you know energy magnets like it, it all sort of you know once once it that ball forms it like just kind of snowballs and gets bigger yeah you know can't really explain other than it was really refreshing to see particularly you know from the 90s i mean there was still a lot of kind of people creating hit records but you know that was the time when you know progressive that progressive house music was the thing which so to see how uh, mature and talented people are from my city is quite incredible yeah Nice. I don't really know why, but I do think that just energy kind of, you know, attracts, you know, it, it snowballs. Yeah, I understand, yeah. I understand. Yeah. So are there any kind of current um, new artists ar- like emerging from Melbourne that maybe we haven't heard of yet? That you think oh, I pop? think, I think um, there's, there's, excuse my French, a shitload of them and they're, and they're all like 17, you know, i.e. like my son and, he, you know, he's got this crew and there's, there's a whole bunch of them. So I think, but I think this is a universal thing. I don't necessarily think it's just Melbourne, but there's going to be a stack of artists. Um, you know, well, I'll keep you informed on who exactly they are. Right now, the focus is, you know, there's El Shimada, Lisa Joy, but they're obviously really established now. But the exciting thing is there's a whole bunch of new people that we don't even know yet the key is um i guess how they get their music out there sure in a in a world of this sea of kind of so much there's so much this is the challenge we had a uh, high here last week and she set up a label for like emerging oh, yes. artists and yes. we discussed how challenging it is now because obviously it's never been easier to dj never been easier to produce or to self-release yes. so there's just like an ocean, ocean. of music yes. so like thousands of release digital releases every day hundreds of thousands. how do you get heard it's yeah. a challenge that's yeah. right uh interestingly enough i've i've talked about a similar thing because um like i'm saying you know being around a bunch of 17 18 19 year olds and hearing the stuff that they're making it's just like you don't understand how good this is like what so um encouraging them to to get it out there um because you know it's one thing to be talented it's another thing to be able to kind of take it to that next level and make sure people hear it so i've thought about the same thing actually you know trying to help them set up labels just get it out there. So you you had a forgive me, I don't know if it's still on because I don't live in Australia, but you you did a TV show on I did on what ABC. It was it? ABC. Yeah. It was a live three hour Saturday morning TV show, which was uh, at the time just uh, it was crazy because it was literally live. Um, so it was called Recovery. Okay. So <laughs> that we have a nighttime version, which was Rage, which is like um, so they were kind of connected, but the Saturday morning one was live every Saturday. I did it for two years and it was proper crazy. Like it was hysterical because you just, you've got this live studio audience. And for, for me, I'd go straight after my residency, a gig. 
um because you'd have to be there at 5 a.m so i'd go straight from the club you know to getting makeup done the next minute you're staring down this black box with this live studio audience and it was proper crazy but we had all kinds of artists like you know so many um jarvis cocker public enemy Whoa. i mean and at the time though uh as i've said before you know especially abc tv in australia melbourne back then that's why it's so refreshing to see what's happened in melbourne now you know it was very much indie kind of rock um i think my segment as the electronic music presenter was a bit of a fill that they needed to fill um but you know the producers weren't necessarily giving a shit about any I of see, it I they see. just needed to tick that box but yeah, yeah i got the gig I, I mean the idea of doing live tv was never my thing but like anything face your fears yeah and i did go for it as a casting you know they had a peop- a bunch of people from agencies that weren't actually into music so i got the gig so and i was like oh my of, god what yeah. the f- how am I going to do now? Yeah, it yeah. was fun. Excellent. But and so uh, what have you got coming up next in terms of music? Any interesting gigs coming up or anything you want to talk about? Uh, what have I got coming? Oh, my God. It's just as long as it keeps going. Every gig's interesting. It, you know, I mean, this one was definitely a highlight. Um, but, yeah, there's a few festivals happening because it's as as the cooler months. Well, currently we're in the cooler months, but come September and there's a bunch of things happening. So, you know, I go into state a lot. Um, yeah, I haven't, I mean, haven't been at Europe just because I had kids. I did do it years ago. Um, and then I was meant to go and play with Thomas Sumo and Lakuti actually, which oh. I, at the jazz cafe, um, but at the time, yeah, just through personal things, it was too hard. Now that my kids are older, I've got that freedom. So yeah, hopefully I do get over there, but I feel it's kind of, that's not even necessarily a box I need to tick. Yeah. I'm happy to just keep repping, you know, Well, you're in here, my you're city, having like, fun and you're playing music oh, yeah. to heads, you know. Yeah, like you're winning. this is it. It yeah. doesn't, yeah, it's not necessarily about geography yeah. um, or having to sort of show online that I've played here, there. For me, it's literally in the moment. I just freaking love it. So I love it. Um, Still love it. Yeah. Okay. Before we go, there's, I wanted to, you had an EP out a few years ago on uh, Bubble Tees. I did. And then the vinyl came out on Running Back. On Running Back. Like great labels. Yeah. And Murray's Fulton Remix. So yeah, do you want to My. talk a, a little bit about that? Like, yeah. You, well, you, you haven't been in the studio since? Or? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, now it's, you know, now is the time, like I said, the, where there's a bit more freedom. Obviously, as you know, when you have a, uh, children and then you're trying to you know i'm a single parent so trying to actually maintain and live is hard but you know they're all excuses now there's no more excuses so yeah um and i figure you know it, it there's no there's no um there's no aim game there's no because sometimes it's like oh god is it just like way too late we do have we did have six more tracks we had an album coming out so which would have been on the same label through bubble tees and that's still in the works we've still got those sitting there but as I mentioned earlier, you know, I had a bit of a hiatus because I had a pretty major surgery and thought probably would I never, ever be able to hear again. But here I am loving life more than ever. So, oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, the plan is to release some stuff that, you know, definitely. And don't let age, don't let, you know, the fact that you've been going for so long stop you. Yeah. Okay, that's good. But yeah, good for, a bit personally, for my own know. sake. Yeah. And uh, what have you got next? Like, you're in Bali for another week? Uh, yeah, hopefully, just, you know, I could just stay here. <laughs> I don't want to go back. It's yeah, too I bet you don't. gloomy. Where are you heading after this? Um, after Bali, back oh, home to Co- after Cold this Melbourne. Interview. Oh, Uluwatu Beach. Okay. Oh, my God, I love it here so much. It sounds perfect. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, well, Jeanette, that's been great. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to look out for those releases. Oh, hopefully. yeah, do. Yeah. Yes, well, that's... Yeah, I will keep you informed. Okay, excellent. Thanks so much, Jeanette. (laughs) Thank you for having me. (laughs) All right, I think we're good.